Hi there, this is Ryan from Masuva. Today I wanted to go through the Composer and give an outline of how to set it up and how you normally use it with your projects. The Composer is one of those features that we really love. We think it's one of Concrete Five's best features, but in talking to people we find that um, they often really don't know how to actually use it or, or they're sort of missing out on the benefits of what it does. So this is a quick demo to sort of show a typical case of using the Composer and then from there you'd be able to look at other ways you'd, you'd be able to use it for your project. So okay so what I've got here is a Composer demo. I've just set up a very vanilla Concrete 5 uh, install. I've set it up with um, one of our sort of starting point templates so it's very plain, plain and boring. Um, so ignore the styling, just really just have a look at the coding that I'm doing for this. So um, first thing we need to do, if we're going to be doing any, any custom coding, we need to uh, make sure that the, the cache is turned off. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to turn off the, the block cache and overrides cache. They should then stay out of my way. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to set up a composer page that handles um, the concept of products. Um, products is something that could be handled by e-commerce, but sometimes you don't want to actually put them, on, put them for sale. Um, but this actually, this example is sort of irrelevant. It could be any sort of data structure where you've got the same information you're wanting to easily add to the site and present in a consistent way and manage with pages. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go to my theme here and I'm going to copy a, a default page here and I'm going to call this product. And this is to create my, my new page type. I then have to go to themes and I need to inspect my theme and you'll see that product comes up here to be able to create it as a new page type. So that's done there. Now straight away if you go to Composer you'll find that there's nothing set up. You actually have to say which pages you want to set up for the Composer. Before we do that and actually turn it on I'd like, I want to go through and just create a couple of page custom page attributes to associate with this page type. Now when you're doing that you're really thinking like a database table. So uh, our actual product names in this case is going to be handled by the um, the name of the page but we've got some other things like say the size of the product or an image for the product that we we want to manage with page attributes. So that's what I'm going to do first. So I'll search for page attributes here and I'm going to add two types. I'm going to add a text and I'm going to call this size and it's worth noting the handle. This is we're going to use the, this label here later in some code and I'm also going to add an image file and I'm going to call this, I'm just going to call this image just for simplicity sake and we add those. Now they're ready to go to use, you could use them anywhere in the site but what we're now going to do is we're going to go to page types and we're going to go to the Composer button here for the product. And what we're going to do is we're going to say yes, we do want to have it as a Composer, uh, composer type of page. And see now my new attributes are down here. And I say I want to include them uh, on the Composer page. I'll leave this as it is for now, but I'm, I'll come back to that in a second. I'll hit Save. And now if we go to the Composer, we'll see we've got a product Composer page that comes up. But there are my two attributes ready to go. And we can, we can build up this form as we need with as many attributes as we need to, to store and manage the information. Okay, so the next step though is that we can, could add for some description here, like some extended description, um, another attribute here. Um, I'll just say for descriptions, we tend to use the, the, the short description here because that comes default with every page. And so for little summaries or short snippets, that's the place for, use for description. But if you wanted to have something with, say, extended lists and the, and the uh, WYSIWYG editor, we want to add an extra block here. And there's two ways. We can do it with page attributes. Or what we can actually do is we can go to page types. We can go to defaults. And we can edit this page here and add in a block. Now I'm going to add a content block with nothing on it. Then once that block's there, we can click on it and actually now go Composer Settings. And this one here, I'm going to say uh, Extended Information. So here, and we save this. If we now go back to the Composer, you'll see that 
block editing controls is pulled in there. Now we can actually do that with a whole series of different kinds of blocks. So that's a diff that's another way to pull them into the composer information. Um, I tend to, to err on the side of using page attributes. They're a little bit easy to manage on the programming side of things, but it's worth worth mentioning that that's um, often the way that, that things are set up with the composer. Right, so what we're going to quickly do is we'd like to be able to nest all these pages all the time underneath a particular page. So I'm going to create just a normal page here called products. And this is where we're going to list. I'm going to, I'm going to create a page list as well to show all of the products underneath. So let's say we'll show 10 of the products here and we'll order them by the most recent first. So it's kind of like our most recent recent products. And we've got no products yet, so that's that's all ready to go, but this is our page here. I might just add an auto nav just to, just to make sure that we um, can always get back to this page. So, okay, there's our home and our products. Now going back to the, the page types, and going back to the product and composer settings, this option here I skipped before, we can actually say that when we create a new page using the composer for a product, we always want it to be under a particular page. So I'm now going to select this products page here and save that. So now when I go into dashboard and the composer, you see that it's actually forcing me to put that under there. So that's fantastic for things like news or products or um, business listings or um, things where you don't want them to just be ad hoc over the site. You want them to be placed in a, a specific spot on the site map. So that's all ready to go. And in terms of the actual configuration, we've done all we need to do on the dashboard side of things to set up the, uh, the composer for that page type. And we could, if we wanted to, add more attributes down the track. So now it's onto the code side of things. Now at the moment, our products page, let's actually just let's just add a, a product first because um, we need something to be able to work with. So I'm gonna say a can of beans. And uh, I'm gonna say this is a tasty can of beans. I'm gonna say this is 250 grams. And I've already uploaded some files. Well actually no, I haven't uploaded. I'll upload a file to file manager. And select that there and I'm going to say um, uh, tomato flavor uh, do not put in microwave and so I've got my, my WYSIWYG there so I'm going to hit save and that's going to publish that page now you can see that that's pulled in the information from the the, the block that we added but it's missing the other information that we need so this is where it comes down to editing this product page so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in the title of the page and this is like um, any other sort of way that you might output the title of a page it's really the um, the collection name so I'm going to echo here get collection name and save that. You see that's refreshed there and you can see it's already spitting out that title. So that's so that's handling the the name of the product. We've got we've got two other things we need to do. One is we want to output um, a the size and I'm going to put in size here. I might just wrap that in a label. And for this one, we need to echo C get attribute. And in this case, we called the handle of the attribute size. So that should work there. And we'll close that. And you can see now we're starting to pull that into the page. So we can do this as much as we need to, to actually output the attributes. And it's really up to you how you style this, uh, how, how you format it. It doesn't even have to be HTML. It could even be XML. So you've now got this database um, structure. You're adding via the composer and you're outputting via your templates here. Now this page is missing uh, the image of the beans that I've uploaded. But what I'm going to do first, so I'm actually going to uh, modify the page list template here first uh, as we can actually use the code from that in, on the page template. It, it makes sense to do this first. So what we want to do, if we want to override this page list template, 
we need to first go to the top level blocks folder we need to create the folder called page list and inside of that we're going to create a folder called templates and then what we need to do is we need to expand the concrete folder the blocks folder inside of that and copy into our new folder the, the view.php file from the page list so I'm just going to do that here then I'm going to rename this something something more specific so it's going to be uh, product product lists or product list I should say once we've set that up um, to change the uh, the actual template here I need to edit the page and change the the custom template to product list there now it's not going to be any different because we've copied the page but we we now can assume that it's using that now this product list um, template or the, our new product list template the default actually has a lot of useful code commented out in it um, this is uh, really useful to be able to customize it and we're going to do that right now so first thing I'd like to do is I would like to get an image showing up I'm going to uncomment first the image helper and that's what we will need there and while I'm I've, my cursor's on that line I'm going to copy that onto my product page as well I'm, I'm going to need an image helper there so that that makes sense now if we start to scroll down we've got custom attributes and it's talking about how to use an image attribute well that's step one I've uncommented that line now I need to go fetch my attribute so I'm going to copy this line here and I, I recall I just called it image so that's that's actually going to fetch and store that file and put that into image there so I can I can um, start to manipulate it and I want to resize that down to a thumbnail size and um, put that on the page so I do want to output the image tag like this I'm going to copy this line here uh, sorry I missed a skip I need to actually create the thumbnail sorry uh, underneath so that's using the image tag there but it is resizing it now just a quick explanation of these numbers here if this is set to false this is going to resize it to 64 pixels wide but it it has um, it can be in tall or as short as it needs to be and that's why there's a big number there to not influence however we change this to true what's going to happen is it's going to crop it always it's going to center and crop it to meet that that square that 64 64 square that I've created there so that's a really useful thing if you've got a layout that you not necessarily worried about fitting everything into the picture you're just sort of wanting to give an impression of a, of a product or something that's uh, that's where you can set that to true and the cropping happens so so we've got our image attribute we've got our thumb that's going to generate that on the fly and now finally I'm going to output the image tag and I might just put that straight underneath here and I'll hit save refresh and we're starting to output the beans so from there I could simply um, fetch other attributes so I might do something like the size uh, equals page get attribute and like I did on the page itself there's the size and I could go down and oops, echo the page sorry the size like that and I might just put that in a, a paragraph that and refresh so on the page list itself we can output what we need or we can simply not exclude things so this might be a summary here it's already outputting this description and that's that little description there but on this page we're not outputting our, our block um, with our extra detail so then we click through we're getting the page itself um, we could put the description on here so let's let's go back to our page and I've got the size I'm going to put in here let's get collection description now note the difference here one is using C because we're actually looking at a page on the product list we're looping through each page so in the in that loop it's actually called uh, page but the actual what we're doing with that object is exactly the same we're just either getting a, a name the description or an attribute 
from it and we're echoing it to the screen. So I'll finish that off and you'll see there's my description starting to spit out there. So finally we want to put the image on this page. So I, un, I put the helper in there. I'm going to go up and fetch my, um, my two lines I did to fetch and resize the image. And I'll put them up here. But I have to change that to, to C because we're talking about the page and I might make this bigger and I'll go back out to say 200 and we'll not resize it. And finally, we'll output the image tag itself. So let's put that there. And there's a can of beans showing up on the screen. And we can do, we can actually do lots of tricks here. If we want to do a light box and you know JavaScript, we can uh, actually create two versions of that image there and do our, our light box linking. Now the last thing I wanted to show you with this though is there are there is an issue with simply outputting um, the information directly like this. So for example, I'll just quickly add a new uh, new product, carton of eggs, and I'm going to pick a picture of eggs. And I'm going to say this is a dozen eggs. Well, no, it's actually six eggs, isn't it? Six eggs. And I'm not going to put anything else. I'm actually going to leave the size out for that product. I'm going to publish the page. Now, that's working. That's, that's fantastic. But um, I've got this size label, and that really doesn't make sense to, to output if we don't have any, any values. Um, we've got it outputting. Um, we're not using... We've got the size here. We can't really notice that that's, that's not appearing there. But on the actual carton of eggs page it's outputting a label we don't want. So what we're going to do is we're just going to adjust this code a little bit to, to make, it, uh, make it check if that value is there. So I'm going to move this size value here. I'm going to cut that and put this up here. And I'm going to store it in a variable instead, like I did with the image here. And I'm going to echo that size there. And I'm going to wrap this in a quick if statement. So if we have a size. If there's something in it, it'll only, um, it'll only, what's it doing? There we go. Close that. It'll only output it if it needs to. So on our six eggs, we've hidden that label, but if we go back to our other one, can of beans, we can see it actually is spitting out that label there. So, so that's how we, a, a little basic example, but probably more critical is we make sure that we do that with this, this, um, this image thumb because if we start trying to resize an image that simply doesn't exist we're going to we're going to throw some errors and php is not going to like that so we're going to do a similar thing we're we're going to take this line and we're going to move this down and put it in its own line here php probably around here but we're going to wrap this and say if we have an image so it's only going to start to do this line if we actually have fetched an image and then finally, I'm going to put it on the other end of this image tag because we don't want to output a blank image and it's going to be looking for a thumb and thumb doesn't exist. So we do that. So we save that. Now we're not going to see that, but if we go back and let, I'll show you another way while we're doing this to edit um, pages via the composer. We can go to the, the site map. We can go to carton of eggs and edit and composer there. So we can actually go back and edit these properties as if uh, in the same way that we added it. I'm going to clear this and publish it. Now, that's it. We're not getting any errors or anything. Now, we're seeing how there's a blank line there. We'll need to do the same trick we just did to the product page by checking that there's an image there before outputting. So, yeah, so that's um, that's a very basic example of the, of the composer. This can be expanded to do as many many different attributes as you need. There are some also some advanced attributes that you can install from the marketplace, and they they can point at more complex things like other pages or um, file sets. And using that, you can build up some very, very complex. That's Concrete 5's Composer. Cheers.